is AI overhype. A lot of AI tools promise a lot of magical things in their demo videos and their marketing videos, but half the time it just doesn't hit the mark. So I've got the pleasure to sit down with David Quintanilla, who's the video lead at Zapier. This is part of the video series where I talk to industry experts to find out how they're really using AI. All right, so David, you work at Zapier as manager of video. Tell me what do you think about AI? Like what I've noticed that a lot of AI tools have promised one thing, but when you actually use them, the results are not quite there yet. Is it the right amount of hype, overhyped or underhyped? I would say that when everything sort of started blowing up, you know, everyone's talking about AI. It was actually a really exciting time at Zapier. We spent a lot of time sort of trying to figure out how we can use Zapier within our workflows. And so we actually called it like a code red at Zapier. It was like, hey, we're gonna spend two weeks trying to figure out how AI AI can work for you, right? And so it was exciting, right? ChatGPT came out, everyone's like, how can we use this? This is so, this is very unique and different. And so I'd say at first, I think maybe underhyped, you know, I was talking to a lot of friends trying to say, have you seen this tool? Look at what it can do. Look at all these amazing things, you know, mid journey. And I spent a lot of time being like, oh, look at this, look at this cool. And, and just kind of exploring and playing. So I think I would say underhyped initially. I think once I really started to try to figure out a use case for how it would actually help me at work. I think that's when, to me, it was a little bit overhyped. We weren't necessarily, a lot of the tools weren't quite there to help me all of the way. I think maybe my expectation at first was like, hey, this is going to like save me, you know, all of my time, especially in video production is a little bit different. I'm like, where can I really find the most help? And I thought I wouldn't be able to reduce my scope within the production process. So in the middle, right? You know, the first 70% of your time should be in pre-production, 20% in production filming, and then the 10% in editing post-production. And so I thought I'd be able to remove that 20% like lower of the production part and like maybe cut it in half, which I was excited about, but it wasn't really quite there. So I was focusing on the wrong thing. The real area where it could have helped me at the beginning and where it's helped me now is the pre-production process. So I've actually been able to implement a lot of different tools and strategies within the pre-production process to kind of speed that up. Instead of spending maybe a month, I can spend maybe three weeks, two weeks, depending on the, the scope of the project. But I would say now, you know, things are getting better, but in terms of video production, there was a lot of people afraid that your job's gonna be taken, right? You're, what do we need creatives for? and all this, but it, I don't think we're even close to being there yet. I mean, maybe if you're a junior editor, there's a lot of things that now AI tools can, can really kind of do. You know, you gotta kind of really figure out the right skills, but I would say right now we're kind of maybe just about right. I think people are sort of settling down and realizing, hey, how we're really trying to figure out what is my specific use case, which I think is the, the right approach is like, how can it work? For my workflow for a lot of people you know there was like a specific use case a specific moment that sort of like really unlocked the aha value like you said it's been out for a while everybody's been using it you know a lot of people have been scared a lot of people are like okay this just doesn't really get the work done because i'm like smarter than ai because they got all the knowledge all the experience what was that specific use case or the time that just sort of like unlocked the aha like that's just actually going to change the way you work if there was any yeah yeah i would say the first use case that i started realizing there's a ton of potential is sort of content idea generation, right? And so mm -hmm. because I work remotely and, you know, I'm not working with folks like face to face, I think a lot of times, you know, I'm kind of working and, and you know, we go out and get on a Zoom call and we're trying to come up with ideas, which I think works really well. But I think in terms of thinking like, hey, okay, we want to create content around YouTube marketing, being able to work with ChatGPT and say things like, hey, give me 30 title ideas for this, I think was like a really great, was like a, whoa, you know, like this is this sort of opened up a little bit of the world for me, especially in production when I'm like, oh, I wouldn't have thought of it like this. And maybe it didn't get me the full way, but it sort of saved me time in thinking like, hey, I kind of like these five. Let me sort of workshop that myself. And so it kind of gave me like a, a good starting place. So, you know, I'd write an idea in Slack and then it would sort of go to ChatGPT and then kind of come back to Slack with like a, you know, like an idea or like go into Google Drive or trying to figure out what's the most useful thing there. And, and you know, I think we spent a lot of time sort of playing with, with the sort of workflow and kind of trying to train the AI in the early days, it was a little bit different. It wasn't like as simple to sort of like create as much, but people were still figuring out what a good prompt is, you know? And so I think a combination of figuring out that I can do that. And then I think I spent a lot of time on YouTube trying to find the perfect prompt, right? I think a lot of people were doing that. And so I, I think I found some ones that I was like, wow, this is actually pretty incredible. Like, I think when folks started giving the AI like a personality was saying, you are a, you know, 
video yeah. producer manager and you and so when i found that prompt the first time i think game changer for me because i'm like wow like this is very unique and now we're sort of feeding in information and helping us sort of come up with stuff. So I think that was like the first use case that I thought, wow, this is this is really going to change a little bit of my process. And, and now I have this kind of like assistant partner that can help me with this. That's funny. I think in the future, like a nice flex would be like, I want the prompt to be my personality. Like, hey, you know, like act like David and then write something for like video scripting or whatnot. That'd be such a cool flex in the future. It's true. I mean, sometimes, you know, like when, for example, like I want to do a summary of like something really long and then I'm like, hey, like just, you know, help me sort of write like my reaction to this or whatever. I write, maybe I give like my interpretation real quick and I'll submit a bunch of information. I'll be like, summarize this whole thing that I wrote and then it'll come back and it sounds very different. And I, and I, and I, and I haven't found the, quite the prompt yet, but I try to always say like, can you write this more in my voice in like the way that I wrote? And so that's kind of the meaning of that, right? It's like, I wanted to use the words that I use and not use words that I would never use. You know, sometimes ChatGPT will be like, therefore, and you're kind of like, I would never say that. And so like, you know, it's like, can you sort of like speak a little bit less robotic and so That's funny. But yeah, there's a time for a plug here. Prompt Genie, this is what we're building. I don't know if you know, it's like Grammarly for prompts. So basically like it's a Chrome extension. So when you're writing your prompts, it uh, like writes, like optimize your prompts. It tells you what's missing. So you can write a better prompt. It's something we noticed like again, back in the day when people were like, hey, give me like 30 ideas or like people who are searching for prompts on Twitter or YouTube. We're like, why don't we just generate prompts? So yeah, yeah it's prompt, been, that's, that's, that's prompt Genie is a great idea. I love that. I think that's, I mean, that's super smart. Yeah, it's, it's funny because like every time, like I think like everybody knows ChatGPT already. And like, you know, when I'm talking to people, like I just expect everybody to know. But sometimes you're like in a room, you meet your university friends, like you haven't seen in a while, like they're not necessarily in tech or whatnot per se. And they're like, oh yeah, I just started using it. Or like, you know, I'm going to use it or whatnot. It's like really blows my mind away like that, how much of a bubble that 11 and then like there's so many people who have no experience with the technology whatsoever it's it's kind of like fascinating it's true you know i think of my parents you know my mom some you know she works in digital advertising and she'll ask me like how can i use it for this and i'm like you need to explain you need to tell me your workflow and maybe it can give you some ideas but it's true right like there's a lot of people that i think would benefit a lot from all these manual tasks i mean you know zap your plug there too right it's sort of the manual task sort of like the automation piece it's sort of like how do you sort of figure out the right intersection of that. And I think, again, Zapier has been doing an amazing job with these like chat bots, building all these new features, which is a little bit- I'm super bullish on Central. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah, Central. I mean, right now that's the, the big investment is Central, right? It's like, how do you make Central like an official part and like kind of bring all of the tools and everything together? Yeah, yeah. Central is kind of like bigger brother version of like the Zapier automation, where, you know, like you have that AI to automation, which is kind of explain the flow you want it kind of like build you the automation. So like central is basically like a bigger version of that. Anyway, I mean, there's a video on central on my channel as well. Like, you know, if anybody listening wants to just take a look at what central can do for you. So this is like, you know, like your initial aha moment would work where you were able to like, just use it for creativity, brainstorm ideas without, you know, the colleagues cause you work from home. Any personal like way you use early on, like, you know, the early days, like other than sending, doing pranks with friends. I think one of the things that I was trying to figure out was maybe like a little bit of a career path path into sort of like a creative director, you know, that's sort of like the direction I want to sort of continue to move in, right? I, I have the, the video production chops, you know, I have the editing, I have like th that whole workflow, but the area that I feel sort of the weakest in is usually design, you know, and, and I don't mm -hmm. necessarily want to be a designer, but I want to be able to sort of speak the language that designers do. I work with a lot of designers all the time. And I think that's that area where I'm missing the most, right? And so I think I used it sort of for like career purposes to try to be like, hey, help me come up with a, you know, two year plan. And like, what are the things that I need to learn if I want to sort of be in this thing and like provide me free resources and paid resources and YouTube links and, and, and books that I should read. I think that was like a huge thing for me because, you know, obviously I can do that research and I can Google stuff and I can do this, but I didn't have something where it's sort of like, hey, here's like a plan. Like, here's how you can really sort of start to, to do this yourself self, right? Um, I was exploring programs and things that I can do part time, but this was very different where I kind of almost had a little bit of a coach. So that's, I think that was like a, a big one. And I think second, and maybe just like creatively, just like trying to see like different ideas that we've had in the past, you know, my, my wife and I, you know, she's always interested in like writing around like fantasy and, and sci-fi and, and, and sort of in that genre. And so it was kind of cool to sort of try to pair like ideas of images that we thought of like, you know, characters and sort of try to build those out and, and provide more detail and, and kind of prompts you, right, to sort of say like, what is it, you know, like, 
shiny armor sword that sort of glows with the embers of the, you know, so all these things. And, and I think that was kind of a cool way that we were sort of using that. Um, in the early days, I would say that was, that was more of how I used it personally. Nice. One of my personal use cases early on that I still vividly remember, I had like one day in Zurich and I was like, okay, I need to like really plan my day out really well. So I just used it to like, okay, this is like my interest this is like things I don't want. I don't want to spend this much money. I don't want to like take so much train, like tell me exactly how I should spend my day. And I just like da 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 da. Like from yeah. 8 o'clock to 10 o'clock, like go for breakfast here, go for this, this, this. <laughs> it was perfect. I love that. Moving on to how you use it for work. So David, you've been using AI at Zapier. So it's not like, you know, you kind of move in from like initial user, early adopter to actually implementing AI in the work that you do. That's impacting a company of such a scale and also millions of people who use Zapier. Tell me about like some of the workflows that you like that you use right now, like to help you with save time or like, you know, bridge a scale gap. So like I mentioned, I think for me, the area that I found where AI can provide the most value in, in terms of video production um, has actually been on the two ends. It's been on the pre-production side and the you know sort of post-production. And so I'd say for pre-production, I think what it's done is a lot of times when we have to present ideas to other teams, people are not super familiar with video production and they say, hey, I want this video and I'm not exactly sure what I'm thinking. You know, the way that we've been using it a little bit is, is sort of like, hey, as part of the storyboarding, instead of like, since I'm not a designer, like I mentioned, it's hard for me sometimes to like visualize that. And so I can sort of say, hey, like I work with like Mid Journey or Kyber um, to sort of try to storyboard things and say like, hey, we want it to look like this. And here's sort of like the visual of what we're thinking. You know, we can't really do a lot of product sort of shots, but we can sort of see like, hey, this is what it's going to look like visually. Like we're, we're shooting a customer story or we're, we're prepping something for Zap Connect, our, our big event we sort of can use that to sort of say, hey, we, we're thinking that it might look like this. We can get an instant reaction from folks instead of having like all the back and forth of being like, like this, or what do you mm -hmm. think? And go on location and sort of shoot things and then show them and then sort of get feedback and move back. Instead, we can sort of say, hey, we're looking at like this perspective. How does this look? Like, what do you think about shooting at this angle? And so you can really kind of ask my journey to create something that's pretty photorealistic that sort of showcases what it would look like. And so part of that planning phase, I can sort of storyboard something a little bit more like thoughtful without having to necessarily like scour through B-roll and find a ton of different things. I can sort of start with these images to sort of help tell the story. So, so that's on like the, the, the pre-production end. On like the, the post-production, I think what's helped a lot is sort of the, the way that you can use like transcripts with, with sort of AI. So I think descriptive mm -hmm. It's an amazing sort of tool. I'm, I'm like a huge fan of what they do. I mean, they're they're really pushing the envelope every every time I see what they're doing. But you know, you can remove the ums and ahs. I think one of my favorite features is I direct, right? Like you can sort of be reading a script now on your computer, and then it'll automatically sort of move your eyes to look at a, a screen. And so for folks that are getting nervous, or you know, now I don't have to tell them like, hey, read a line, look up, you know, memorize a line, look back up to make the editing easier. Now I'm just like just put this text like right below this, the camera and just like read it, you know, read it even like emotionally. I was like, we will make your eyes look like you're looking at camera. And I think that's like huge. I think it adds more of like that personal sort of flavor and, and I think makes it a lot more interesting. And so I think those two tools for me have really kind of like changed our production where I don't have to have people like, I don't have to send folks a teleprompter now, you know, I'm like, mm -hmm. I don't even prompter i'm like you really don't need it i'm like just send me the video i can leave in every single mistake i'll remove the ums and ahs um and i think with the script as well you know you have sort of you can remove words and actually like type in the word and change what someone said to me i'm like that is game changer for editors you know you get that sometimes where like you said central zapier not zapier central and it's like how, uh, like do we have to reshoot and it's like no just like switch the words and like it sort of automatically fixes it and i think to me that that's been super huge in terms of workflow so that saves us a ton of time a ton of money and now I can really kind of deliver projects a lot quicker for folks. So someone might say, hey, you know, it used to take us a month to get something. Now I'm like, hey, I can actually maybe do this in two weeks. As a team and as for Zapier, we're able to take on a lot more projects, right? As, as a small team that does a lot, mm -hmm. we're to do that, take more projects on, and also like maybe spend more time on projects that we like are, are excited about, right? I love like the, the eye correct feature. I just hope, you know, we get to a world where like I can use this in real life because Public speaking is even harder than recording on camera. Well, actually that's questionable, but yeah. like, 
it can just do that as like, and then that'll be so much fun. And then everyone yeah. can be a more confident public speaker. I mean, you basically, you just have to have like, your, you know, contacts that sort of like, kind of like adjust your eyes or something like that. You know, it's like, pop out of Oh, that's, that's kind of spooky though. But yeah, I guess that's probably how it like, works. Like low battery on them, you know, they just kind of start flickering. Yeah. Or like, kind of like the Tom and Jerry where they got like the matchsticks here to keep oh, the eyes open. Yeah. Exactly. So you mentioned uh, like for the pre-production process where like you do storyboarding and you have like a bunch of shots from let's say like you know the top down angle and then you get the feedback. So for amateurs like me who are like not video production or like you know don't have like kind of like technical knowledge for video production, can you like dumb it down for us a little bit like uh, in terms of like when you say storyboarding or like you know when you have the shots, if it's a video like are you like imagining their shots and like how are you creating their shots and then like if it's just like a few shots Shots, whom are you getting feedback with? Is it like the internal team? Is it like the external users? Yeah, that's a great question. So the way that our team works a little bit is we sort of function as kind of like an internal agency for Zapier, you know? And so okay. the way that it works is, you know, at the beginning of each quarter, we do quarterly planning to figure out like, what are we going to be investing our time and resources in? Because we unfortunately are, you know, we're a small team. And so we, we can't work on every single project. And so we try to plan that out. And so we'll get a request and we'll work with the team and say, okay, hey, you know, we have an upcoming email campaign that's going out and for a new product launch. And, you know, we, let, let's use Zapier Central, for example, right? We're like, hey, we're launching a new campaign here and we want to include a video or we want to include multiple videos. We're not sure. Right. And so what we'll do is internally as a team, we'll sort of work and be like, okay, great. Like we're going to have an email. We might have a dedicated landing page and, you know, there might be like a webinar that is going to go out as part of this and, you know, maybe some social posts. And so we might think, okay, great. I think it makes a lot of sense to create three different videos here. We might create a tutorial uh, we might create like a splashy demo video mm -hmm. and we create some sort of customer story, right? So that's sort of where it starts. And then it's kind of like what I'm mentioning in the pre-production, all that means is like, we're trying to plan what the video might be. And so we usually start with an, out with an outline. And so we say, okay, we want to cover these five things. And that's also a thing that I think ChatGPT has helped me with. I don't have to like think like too much about all the things. I just kind of like, and I wanted to include this and I want to include this and I want to include this. And then I spit it out and it kind of helps me with like a video outline. The next step that I like to do once you have a video outline, so you might have five things, right? We're going to be an introduction to what it is. We want to talk about feature one, feature two, feature mm -hmm. three call to action. We work with, in this case, the product team, leaders on the product team and say, is this aligned with what you want for this, right? And what we do is once we get the okay on like, okay, this outline looks good, um, which, you know, we start detailing based on some of the stuff that, you know, ChatGPT again helps us just sort of like put it in the right format, right? I think that's that's where I get a lot of help, right? The, the ideas come from us, but we sort of help do that. Then what I do is we like to work on what we call a visual script. And so I think a lot of times, especially with folks that aren't super familiar with video production, it's hard to understand sometimes how long something might take. And so I like to show people. So for example, they might say like, hey, we want to talk about this feature. And I start looking at it and I'm like, wow, this feature is kind of complicated. This might take us a minute to sort of talk about about this one feature, then when, that's when we start thinking like, oh, what do you mean? And I'm like, well, what are we gonna show? Is it gonna be a face? Is it gonna be a screen? Is it gonna be split screen? Is it an animation? Is it B-roll? And so that is sort of the where we, where we do a visual script. So we'll do literally line by line. And we'll say, hey, from, we'll kind of timestamp it on the script as we're sort of writing it. And, you know, we'll work with our writers internally, or a lot of times, or we'll work with our freelance writers and we'll sort of say, from 001 to 007, the first seven seconds, we want to show someone talking and, you know, we want to see their face. We want to see the their title pop up on the bottom. And maybe we want some sort of intro animation to kind of lead us into it. And so... Okay. The visual script is sort of that piece. And if there are pieces that we're unsure and we want to say like, hey, we want to show some type of thing connecting or we want to show some photos of these things, that's when some of like the AI toolkit will come into play. We'll start saying, hey, we start coming up with ideas. We'll pull like stills from, you know, stock footage or, or stock images or things from a mid journey or, and things like that to sort of start visualizing the script. Because what we want to do is we want to get to a place that before we film, we already know what we're going to film and we already know how we're going to edit it. Because I think, like I mentioned, 70% of production should be pre-production. Then that way 20% shooting should be pretty small and then editing should be the easiest part if you've done all those other things correctly. Yeah. So that is sort of what I'm talking about with the, the visual script is like, we want to try to pair an image or an idea for an image 
as part of the outline and then part of the script. And so that way we then send it back to the product team and say, what do we think? Does this align with the story we want to tell? And then that's kind of when we can have a little bit of a back and forth and discussion around what the visuals are, or if we want animations, like, hey, this is going to cost a little bit more money or more time. And so we try to find the right balance between, you know, the quality, the timing and the price, right? And then we we sort of work on that process through that. Tim, that is some process. Real professionals at work. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you know, like I said, this, you know, I've been doing this now for 10 years. And so it's, it's sort of part of part of the workflow is, is that's how you get a high quality video, happy customers, happy zap other Zapier employees that I'm working with. And, you know, you get, you get like the right, the right video out at the right time instead of, you know, because sometimes through that process, you might discover like, hey, is this, should we really make this video? Like, does this make sense? Or we might say, hey, this actually might be five videos, you know, like mm -hmm. why don't we make a series of videos? And you kind of discover that through that process. And I think the thing that I always tell people is like completely flexible. Like I like being like, that's just part of video production. You don't know, you know, something might change, a new idea, the product changes, the visuals change. So that's why it's so important to get all those in front. Nice. So quick question for you, you know, it's a rapid fire one. So yeah. <clears throat> fling, marry, kill. If you have to pick three tools, one tool you have a fling with, the tool you would want to kill, and the tool you would want to marry. I guess, you know, mid journey. I, I, I like okay. using, you know, I okay. think it's really great. And I think it, it helps me. I'm not using it as much anymore. Um, so yeah, maybe, maybe fling. Mary, I'd say definitely, I think Descript has been amazing. You know, mm -hmm. um, it really has been like a great tool um, for us. And then uh, kill, I guess I'd say any tool that sort of tries to create animated videos from scratch and sort of like you can tech, write text in and it'll like develop an animated video. Like maybe I know that they're talking about Sora a lot, that, that tool that hasn't come out yet. Yeah, I don't know if it's real as much as people say, so maybe real Sora for now. Luma Labs uh, just released their same product comparing to Sora. Luma Labs AI. Uh, it's been all over Twitter since yesterday. I even just posted the video, like it was scheduled while we were talking today, actually. But yeah, it can turn like a prompt into a video or like it can have an image and turns into like a five second video, hyper realistic. I think for now, for me, kill, I mean, yeah. any of those tools. That's a this hot is take for sure. Kill Sora. <laughs> kill Sora, kill Luma for now. It's yeah. not. That's coming from a video producer, from like a manager of video. Yeah, it's not, it's not the solution. Love it. Five seconds of video, it's, it's not it. Love it, love it. So this is where we are right now. You know, we got lots of these tools that can done a lot of stuff. Then so like, you know, agents coming, which is where like Zapier is probably gonna be like, you know, taking the leap, They're already pushing the envelope there as well with the, with the central and like all the bots you can create, which is like the way I see it. It's kind of like early agents because they can actually get stuff done from you with Apple's event, you know, with Siri being more powered, that's kind of like, again, more early signs of agents coming. But for you, like, what do you hope to see in the future? Like, what would be like, kind of like the world for you? Like where you think we're headed or like where you would want to be headed in the future? Yeah, I think, you know, I haven't done as much research into a lot of the ways that, you know, content has that from creators get sort of repurposed and reused. I've been seeing a little bit, a lot about, you know, Adobe and how they, you know, now they've updated their terms and conditions within Photoshop that I don't know all the details, but from what I understand is that they can now use those images that you're creating within Photoshop to train their models and right. sort of continue that. I think I want to envision maybe a future where, you know, creatives can submit work that they want to be a part of this project. And, you know, this work is credited in a way where it's like, hey, this 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 was like referenced off of X, Y, and Z's work. And this is how we created this image is sort of a mix of these three artists is what I'd love to see because I, you know, I think as a creative, especially I work with people who do, you know, photography, people who are designers and, and animators. And I think I have so much respect for designers and animators just because of like how difficult of a craft it is. I always think of like, yeah, it might be easy for them now, but they've been doing it for 20 years, you know, or 10 years. And so now it seems easy, but it's it's all the skill set. And so there's a lot of motion designers and motion graphic designers who I follow and I admire a lot. And I, you know, maybe in another life, I, I would be one of those folks. And I think about their work and the idea that it sort of just like can be used without crediting um, folks. I, I don't really like that, right? And so yeah. I think yeah. for me, on, from the creative standpoint, I think I'd like it to be a place where credit is given and you know models are created in a way where you're pulling, it's very clear that you're pulling from these different 
resources to say, here's a combination of these three artists. It could be monetary, but it could also be like, hey, you know, like this is the inspiration of my work. Maybe you want to see the work that I did and, and maybe just bring more attention to these artists. And so, you know, because when Mid Journey was first out, I didn't really know like how it worked. I still, you know, I still don't know how it really works. But now, you know, there's all this, it's being trained, right? It's trained off of these ideas and all these images. And so, although it might be something unique, it's, it's sort of borrowing a style from someone else. And, yeah. and I don't know how that necessarily works. And then I think in terms of video production, yeah, like again, I'm not convinced that any of these like video prompt creation tools are the solution or answer or anything. Yeah, I don't, I don't think that's, that's the right direction that we should be going. I think, you know, maybe big brands that don't want to pay artists maybe want to use that more often. Maybe that's also for me thinking of like uh, of my job and, and my perspective of like what I do. Even if like, let's say, you know, there is a technology that can create Apple-esque, like, you know, those cool videos automatically. I just feel like then it's just going to like equalize the playing field for everybody. But then again, creativity still needs to shine. So how are we going to make a difference? Like, you know, for like 10 different products of like similar style videos, are we going to pop off? How are you going to be differentiated? You have to think more. It just yeah. makes things so much harder. I mean, honestly, creative people will win eventually. That's what I feel. Because like, again, they have the creative juices. They know exactly how to squeeze that out, how to be creative, how to think differently. Thanks, Apple. And then be able to like still kind of like, you know, go past whatever's been happening on the commodity level. Yeah, no, I, I agree. That, that's the right approach. And, and, I, and I agree. I think nothing that I've seen out beats anyone necessarily creatively. I think okay. it should be like a tool and kind of like you mentioned, an assistant and sort of seeing and sort of seeing that. And so I'll say that on the creative side, I want to see more of that. And then obviously from like more of a process standpoint, like, like we mentioned, I think what Zapier is doing with Central and kind of bringing everything together. I think a one-stop shop where people can go and sort of get all their tools and everything together. I think that that's the future we want to see, right? Is like having to open 20 windows to do something instead of just coming to one place and making it happen. Yeah, makes sense. You mentioned that uh, like you probably don't want us to go that direction because maybe kind of like threatens your job as well. Do you foresee any roles in the space that are actually being threatened right now or anything that people say is threatened, but it's actually you think it's it's not true? I think a lot of folks maybe assume that video production, you know, um, especially that creative piece will be sort of is being threatened. I think there are maybe aspects that are made a little bit easier. Maybe you don't need as big of a team or, or as many people maybe. I do think that definitely like, you know, um, junior video editors, I think that one for sure is going to go away. You won't really need someone to sort of set up all the files for you and, and you know, make the first rough cut of like putting everything in order. That like for sure is gonna go away. Like that's, that's there's no doubt in my mind about that job, which is tough because, you know, the way to get to be a better editor is like you need sort of that junior work. People just be, need to be really good with using the tools that allow you to do that very quickly, right? It's interesting because like the people who are experienced, they would need to learn how to adopt the technology or else they're gonna lose their job to someone more efficient. While it's challenging for people who want to bring into the industry because like now they cannot have those junior roles and learn from seniors. So they have to really take the incentive themselves, really be like self-starter and like get that experience they need to be able to then apply for like positions that require those skills off the bat. Yeah, you'll. I mean, like if you're coming in and you want to be a video editor, I mean, first that job is very, very tough. You know, all credit to all video editors. I have a lot of friends who work in video editing. I can do it. I would I consider myself like a, you know, medium level video editor, but yeah, I mean, you have to learn, like you said, the, the tools that allow you to use these AI functionalities to speed up production. And you also need to like specialize in something, right? Whether it's motion graphics or music design or sound design or something very related to that editing field that, that will help you out. Yeah, that's a good point. Just like specializing. I mean, it kind of applies to literally any job field. It's going to be similar stuff where the junior position is going to be limited because like every person who talks about AI kind of talks about as like an intern. So it's kind of like takes away the junior positions and then for senior, you need experience. So you got to learn the tools and you have to like really start putting the reps in and get that experience so you can like, you know, kind of keep yourself relevant and plus kind of find your niche with your interests and like your skills. So you can then kind of like kind of build your own edge, which kind of then goes to branding. So at the yeah. end of the day, everybody needs to be a creator, like have their personal brand in some way while not using AI version of themselves to create content online, even though that's scalable. So many different decisions to make. A lot. <laughs> I think we got to think of it as a tool for now until, you know, yeah. something major, major happens. Um, it's just something to help you along the way. Yeah, shout out to my video editor as well, who's going to be putting in all the work, putting this video together. Maybe like, I should interview them next and see 
what tools they are using right now to yeah. uh, build yeah. the video out. Yeah, that'll be kind of like a bit of a meta video. Uh, yeah, yeah. How did I make this video using AI? Yeah. Why, what happened through the process. So big shout out to David for coming on today and sharing the insights. If you're inspired, like the video, leave a comment, subscribe to the channel, and let me know which other company or person I should interview next. I'll see you soon.